guys, it's that time again to look through some retro Disney movies that I absolutely adored growing up. This one I know pretty well. Let's go all the way back to the beginning of the timeline to 1937. Let's look at Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. This was the very first animated Technicolor film from Walt Disney Animation Studios. And let's face it, we've all seen a Disney princess story at some point throughout our lives but there was only one movie that could do it first. And that would in fact be Snow White, which a lot of people might consider to be Walt Disney's crowning achievement. Mainly because this is what put the Disney name on the map. The story, as if you didn't know by this point, we follow a young princess named Snow White. And she has a stepmother, the Wicked Queen, who is always so jealous of how hot she is. So she orders the murder of her innocent stepdaughter, but later discovers that Snow White is very much still alive. And she's hiding in a cottage with seven friendly little miners who are so damn memorable. So after her huntsman fails her and gives her the heart of a pig as a substitute, the queen disguises herself as a hag, and she brings a poisoned apple to Snow White who falls into a death-like sleep that can be broken only by a kiss from the prince. You know, the one she's been dreaming of who only gets like three lines of dialogue. Seriously, what is it with these animated Disney princes not being interesting? This is a movie that I watched a ton growing up, and... I don't... <laughs> it's tough for me to put a finger on as to why I always gravitated towards this one. But I'm going to try and figure it out with you guys today. Sitting here as a near 26-year-old man in a few days, looking back on Snow White, it is still very damn impressive what they were able to accomplish here. For the late 30s, for the animation to be this seamless, this bright, and this colorful, this is still a damn impressive feature. The backgrounds very much feel like tapestry work. It almost feels like those oil paintings you see on the ceilings of churches. It's absolutely beautiful to look at. Y'all are pretty much aware of who these characters are and what their values are, but are they any good? Well, let's look at our main hero, Snow White, first. Honestly, in terms of princesses, she's not the most interesting. There isn't anything particularly wrong with her, per se. She's morally a very, very sweet person. There's just nothing particularly interesting about her. Same thing with the evil queen, who has one of the weaker motivations, I would say, out of all the Disney villains. It's very simple. Jealousy. All of her dialogue with the magic mirror, especially towards the beginning of the film, these are very eerie feeling scenes, especially with how the magic mirror is delivering his dialogue and his riddles. And the queen is designed so wonderfully. She appears very elegant, but also very intimidating. Can you remember one time where she smiled in this movie aside from when she actually transformed into the old lady? Which I gotta tell you always scared the living bejesus out of me. This design is Stephen Sondheim like nightmares. It's like the witch in Into the Woods almost in reverse. Which brings me to what I think makes the Snow White movie whole up as good as it does the dwarves themselves god i love these guys their song when they walk to and from work always gets stuck in my head every single time i watch this you don't need me to go into detail about every single one you know what each one of them looks like doc is your bumbling leader dopey is your lovable klutz happy is your very go lucky happy person and then you have grumpy who <laughs> <laughs> Grumpy just might be the most interesting one of the bunch. Just because even though he appears very gruff and tough on the outside, he has a soft spot to him. Snow White even says, why Grumpy? I'm surprised at you. You do care. Little moments like that just get the scripts just... Ah, uh, just gives that added touch of Disney magic to it. Which I will admit, the story for Snow White isn't necessarily the most sensical. Yeah, she meets the prince and then what happens? Like, okay, she bites into the poisoned apple, she falls into a death-like sleep, and I guess a bunch of seasons pass and the prince searches for her? But then they just meet and then bada bing, they're together? I don't know, I feel like that's a complaint with every Disney princess movie is how short the time span is for these romances. But I feel like the one thing that Snow White has above of any other Disney movie these days, the emotion. It is just a magical roller coaster of emotions. You have your fun songs with the dwarves where they're walking to and from work, of course. By the way, why does a dopey take the key with him? Doesn't anybody just steal the jewels out of their mind? I don't know. I'm not going to question that one too much. You have the silly song that they sing after supper with Snow White herself. And then you have the big climax where the hag comes in, kills Snow White. The hag falls off the cliff in a very satisfying moment. And then you get the wake. Yeah, you can take back Bambi's mom. You can take back Simba's father. This is the scene that really tore me up when I was a young boy. Right down to the organ music and these dwarves bawling. Don't get it twisted. They're not just crying here. They are sobbing at this. This is the only woman that's ever come into their lives and they've lost her. And they hold her very near and dear to their hearts. They cared about her. And lo and behold, 
there she is, just a cold corpse in front of them. God, that whole ending sequence just really, really got to me emotionally. I kind of felt the waterworks flowing. When Grumpy started crying, like, forget about it. I'm just done. There's no hope anymore. But the thing with Snow White that I find fascinating still to this very day, yeah, there's a lot of story elements that don't really make any sense. But I feel like that's not really what the animators and the storytellers were going for. I think they wanted to play more to what our hearts wanted to see rather than to what our brains wanted to see. This is a movie that was absolutely anchored by its emotional gravity. And you still feel that to this very day? Now, if you haven't revisited Snow White a bunch, if you haven't rewatched it lately... I mean, I get it, it's not going to be everybody's favorite Disney movie, but no matter who you are, no matter how you feel towards this film, you have to respect it for doing the Disney formula first. Snow White and the Seven Dwarves is a true pioneer in animation and filmmaking in general, and I think it deserves all the respect and the preservation that it's received over these past 85 years. I'm going to give Snow White and the Seven Dwarves an A. Only thing leaving it from an A plus are just those little nitpicks that I just can't see past. The fact that the prince only has like three lines of dialogue is just so baffling to me. And again, why is the queen so pissed off that her stepdaughter is talking to somebody? They never explain that. I mean, you can imply and you can assume things, but you also want the scripts to be fully aware of what's going on, right? Anyhow, yeah, that's just my movie brain talking. Let me know what you thought of Snow White down in the comments section below. What is your favorite old school Disney animation? I'm talking golden age before the Disney renaissance of the 80s and the 90s. As always guys, I love sitting here and making these videos and talking all things movies with you guys. So if you're a new viewer, do consider becoming a subscriber and hit that notification bell. That way you don't miss another second of this action. Hit that thumbs up on your way out. That would be especially helpful. This really, really helps these videos get out there to more lovely viewers like you. And y'all stay tuned for more exciting content hitting my channel very, very soon. Definitely looking to do a lot more Disney going into the new year, 2023. I can tell you that my next Disney animation review that I'm going to be doing retro-wise, we're going to turn the clock again forward from this point to the year 1953. We're looking at a super influential Golden Age Disney movie for its 70th anniversary. Next up is going to be Peter Pan. So stay tuned for that video and so much more, guys. Y'all are the best. And uh, with all that being said, back talk, commence. Yeah.